Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and the ultimate Pelican dropship mock overview video. Over the course of this video, I'm going to discuss the scale, the dimensions and the weight of the mock. I'll also show you the interior of the mock, then I'll move on to the lift mechanism at the back where I'll show you it lifting a Warthog and a Scorpion. We'll also move on to the weapons side of things, the weapons that I've created to turn it into a more weaponized version of the Pelican. I'll also show you some comparison photos against some other sets, as well as showing you the inspirational photos and videos I used as reference during the build of the mock. One of the most common comments I've received on these videos over the series is, is that it's not minifig scale, this mock. So to address this, I decided to show you how I came about the scale that I used. So I started by Googling the average height of a US Marine, which was five foot seven or 170 centimeters, which is 1.7 meters. I then looked at the length of the Pelican in law, which is averaging at 30.5 meters, as you can see by the pictures on the screen. Using this information, I then divided 30.5 meters long by 1.7 meters tall, the height of a Marine, and came out with an answer of just shy of 18. I then measured one of my micro action figure Marines, and that came in at around five centimeters, maybe slightly over. So I then times that five centimeters by 18 and got 90 centimeters. So that gave me the length I should have been going for with this Pelican. I also did the same with the width, which gave me just shy of 69 centimeters and the height at 32 centimeters. So with all that said, to answer the question so many of you have asked, is it too big? Yes, it is too big. The overall length of the Pelican ended up coming in at 114 centimeters so 24 centimeters longer than it should be the overall width came in at 97 centimeters so we're another 27 centimeters wider than we should be there and the overall height came in at 36 centimeters so a good few centimeters taller than it should be as well now there are reasons for this which I'll go into later in the video it couldn't be helped in some respect but for all those that have been convinced that it's too big, then you're right, it is too big for minifig scale. But as I say, there are reasons. So as we go through the video, I will explain those reasons as to why it's bigger than it should be. The next question I'm going to answer is how many pieces are in the mock and how much does it weigh? This question, both these questions have been asked an awful lot. In regards to how many pieces I used to build it. I didn't count them. I'm not going to take it apart to count them. But what I did do was I tried to figure it out roughly by weight, which I know isn't very accurate, but it does give a rough idea of how many pieces must have been used. So I start off by weighing the Mega Blocks Pelican gunship when it's completed, and that weighs just shy of 700 grams. Now the Pelican gunship has over 1,100 pieces as a set, 1,161, but that includes the figures and the weapons. So I've not counted it, but I believe it knocks it down to about 1,000 pieces without the figures, just for the Pelican. If I weigh the ultimate Pelican dropship, it's 16 kilos. That's 16,000 grams. So if I divide 700 grams into 16,000, it basically goes as good as 22. So if I use the same amount of parts for this as was used in the Pelican gunship by weight, then that would put me at about 22,000 pieces. How accurate that is, I don't know, but that's as good as it's going to get. So we could argue it's somewhere between 20 and 25,000 pieces. The final question I wanted to answer related to this part of the mock is a number of people have said, can I still move it? Does it move around, does it fall apart and so on? Well, yes, I can still move it. Is it easy to move around? No, not really. It's difficult to pick it up. You can only pick it up via one hand under the tail section and one under the belly. So it's definitely not easy to move and it is also very big. In fact, it's so big, I don't think many of you have an appreciation for how big it is. The best way for me to get across to you exactly how big this is, is to get someone to pick it up. 
So I've asked my friend John to uh, lend a hand again. I brought in some outside muscle. He is in his civvies today, so you might not recognize him, but he's agreed to uh, lift the Pelican for you guys and give it a little flight test. So here we go. So hopefully that covers all the questions you guys have asked regarding size, scale and weight of the mock. We're now going to move on to the next segment of the video which is to take a look at the interior of the mock. As you can see here, troops can access the main troop bay by the rear load bay door on the back of the Pelicans. This is just hinged to go up and down. If you want to gain access to the pelican from above it's just a simple case of removing the wings and then removing the roof sections as you can see here the first thing you need to do is remove the two tail engines just because of a weight perspective next thing you need to do is you remove the front section of the cockpit then the roof comes off nothing holds that on apart from gravity and then once that's off you move on to the wings the wing sections and the engines are held on just by one 2x4 and one 2x6 plate on either side and the rest is done by gravity again so it is all relatively easy to get apart. As you can see this gives you full access to the interior from above although the armory or airlock that section in between the cockpit and the troop bay is almost impossible to get your hands in there so I've made it so the cockpit section quick releases with just removing a couple of plate pieces and then it just slides off on pins. This fully exposes the armory for ease of access. If you haven't seen phase two of the build, you can see the armory in much more detail. And the same goes for the cockpit. But as you can see here, I'll just show you a few highlights. Both the armory and the cockpit have sliding doors into each compartment. And the cockpit seats also have the twist and slide function as seen on the Halo Infinite trailer. Moving on to the troop bay, you can see I've got full access to the interior of the troop bay by being able to remove these seat sections. Now, this is a good time to explain why the Pelican is bigger than it is. This whole mock started with just trying to create the troop bay interior for a stop motion filming idea that I had. Now, from watching the Halo Infinite trailer, you can clearly see that there's five seats in the back of this Pelican and it's ginormous. If you haven't seen it, have a, have a watch of it and you'll see how big the Troop Bay is. Now that's where I took my inspiration from, which we'll come back to later. But in regards to why it's so big, it was because I wanted to be able to create these seat sections as you see them here with enough room in between them that they were nicely spaced out. As soon as I did that, I measured it to my scale and realized the ship was already going to be slightly too long, but I wasn't prepared to compromise on this. I, wouldn't, I didn't want four seats or three seats. I had to have five seats on either side, and I wanted enough room to be able to put those grab rails in between either seat. There's a few missing on this picture, but I do have some additional rails to go in. I haven't actually yet created the second row of seats for the other side that's missing in these pictures because I didn't have the pieces. I do now have the parts. I've just recently received another eBay haul with the parts that I need to create that second row of seats. Now, the second reason for the Pelican being so long is the sliding doors. If I just put a single stud divider between the troop bay, the armory and the cockpit, the length of the ship would have been 
six studs shorter, which in comparison for its overall length, I know that it, that doesn't compensate for the whole size of it, but if you go six studs further forwards, you've got to go six studs further backwards. So that's 12 studs, and that alone is quite a length. And again, it still doesn't fully compensate. The rest of it is just down to the fact that I was using blocks and this isn't a scale replica, it is a mock. So it was as close as I could get it to the size I wanted it to be whilst keeping all of the proportions in check. So it was undeniably recognizable as a Pelican. Now that we've taken a look at the interior, it's time to move on to the lift mechanism at the rear of the Pelican. It was really important to me that this Pelican be able to carry not only a mongoose, but a scorpion as well. I have been able to manage to achieve this, but due to the fact that the Pelican is slightly too large, it does make the Warthog and the scorpion look slightly smaller. That said, the scorpion and the Warthog are both underscaled compared to the scale that I gave you at the beginning of this video. So I may in time create a slightly larger version of the Scorpion and the Warthog. But until I do that, we're just going to have to make do with the stock vehicles. And here comes one now. To connect the Warthog to the lift mechanism, first of all, you can just lower the lift mechanism down. It's on a small hinge that can come down from underneath the tower section. And you connect these two clear plastic rods They've got black clips on the top which clip into the side of the magnetic lift mechanism and then they have clear clips on the bottom of the rods but they're not quite at the bottom. You can see here they, they're you can adjust them up or down depending on the size of the vehicle it's lifting. It just makes it stay closer to that magnetic clamp just to make it look a little bit more believable. And there you have it, one warthog hanging off the back of the pelican. I'll show you guys some more pictures of this towards the end of the video. Before we do that, I want to show you what it looks like with the scorpion hanging off the back. Unfortunately, the scorpion is a bit more of a faff to get onto the pelican, but as you can see, it does go on. It doesn't have grab rails on the side of it like the warthog to just connect to, so I've just attached some. I've modified the body of the scorpion ever so slightly just to take a couple of those hook plate pieces to attach those rods to. I also added this black plate just across the top because it just helps support the scorpion to stop it from swaying back on those bars that it's suspended by. And that's the scorpion and the warthog suspended from the rear of the pelican. The thing I'm most pleased about here is that the landing gear at the back can still support the back end of the pelican even with the scorpion hanging off the back which I honestly didn't think it was going to be able to do so I'm particularly chuffed about that bit. Okay guys we're going to move on to the weapons now. For those of you who have seen phase six of the video you'll know that I built this nose gun for it. All these weapons are they're not cannon um, they just guns I made up I just like the look of them as you can see I've used as many pieces as I could I used the joints for the Mantis to make this gun up for the barrels on the uh, side of the guns. They're supposed to pictate ammunition cases for basically an auto cannon on the front of this Pelican with just some hoses there that came off of the Frost Raven that I just stole just for this mock. I'll put them back when I'm finished with it. And that's it for the nose gun. Moving on to the wing mounted weapons. I started with these. I've seen these on some of the pictures that I was taking inspiration from. Not exactly like this, but I kind of, I wanted the freedom to build with these. I just really, I wanted to create something that just looked like, um, I think, I don't know what I would class these as. Maybe archer missile pods? I don't know. Maybe archer missiles are a bit bigger, but it's just sort of small missile multiple launchers. I just like the idea of, you know, there's nine barrels there. I just like the idea of all those going off at once. And then finally, these, uh, yeah, very controversial. I just, I had these, these are from the uh, Countdown set from the Sabre. Now, I just couldn't resist using these. I had to use four Countdown sets to make these up. But yeah, as I say, a bit controversial, but I really, really like them. I just think they, they just make the mock pop with these hanging off their wings. So, um, in my head, they'd be pretty destructive, saved for a special occasion. But uh, yeah, you guys can let me know what you think of those. I'm sure they're very Marmite, love them or hate them, but either way, they're staying on. 
Fitting the weapons to the Pelican couldn't be easier. You just take these pods off. Still don't know what these are called, so any aviation experts out there, I'm sure you can leave a comment to let me know what they're called. But yeah, you just remove these and then you can just pop the weapon straight into those holes that are left there. Whilst we're on the subject of controversial things, this leads me on to the next part of this video, which is stickers. So I wasn't sure whether to put stickers on it or not. Obviously the original Megablox Pelican has stickers on it. So I received these just recently whilst making this video. So I've decided to put them on anyway, just to see what it looks like. Definitely want your feedback on these stickers. Um, when I first put them on, they're really white, too bright. So I decided to dirty them up a bit. And how did I dirty them up? Well, I simply put some dirt on them. It seemed to be the easiest way to do it. So. Uh, I think they definitely look better when they're not so new, but do let me know what you guys think. Now that we've uh, given the Pelican some weapons and we've put some stickers on it, I think it's only right that we get John to give it another flight test for you so you can see what it looks like. more things to show you including some comparison photos with other sets but before we get there I just want to take a minute to thank everyone for their support throughout this series. The series has accumulated 358,000 views across all the videos on this Ultimate Pelican Mock series. It also comes to over 10,000 thousand hours worth of viewing and it's gained the channel an additional 2,800 subscribers just off this series so this video is a thank you to you guys I've really enjoyed all of the comments you've left on the various videos and the questions that you've left me as well and this video is the best way I could come up with to answering all of your questions so hopefully come the end of this video you'll feel that if you've asked a question through this series you've now had that answered obviously if there's any more questions by all means leave them in the comments section below if you are new to the channel and you're enjoying the video then please do subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button now let's get back to the mock front i haven't shown you guys yet is the front wing angle movement so these wings just like the uh, rear engine pods that can move up and down the front wings can move up and down as well i've managed to achieve this by putting these technic pieces in here and i just adjust this pin you can just take this pin out of the technic block put it in another hole and it allows the wings to go up and down so you can change the angle of them depending on what the pelican's doing coming into land and so on so i'm pretty pleased with that feature because it was a bit of a head scratcher how to incorporate that into the mock there's also a couple of other little features that i haven't shown you around the mock as well Underneath the main engines on the front wings, you've got these little directional jets to uh, aid with vertical takeoff, I believe. And then the flaps on the back of the wings, you just saw them go up and down. 
And then obviously if you have seen the earlier videos, you'll know that the rear engines can go up and down either together or independently. You can see that on one of the other phases of the build, which I will put together for you. I'm going to do a start to finish build video all in one go. So you can see the whole thing start to finish as soon as I get a chance to put that together. A number of you also asked to see this mock against some stock sets. So I've taken a few pictures of various different sets here and uh, and you can see here there is quite the size difference so it absolutely dwarfs both the Spirit dropship as well as the UNSC Infinity set. I also offered it up against a Seraph and a Wraith, the Pelican gunship and the Pelican dropship. Another incredibly common comment that I got across the videos was that I'd put the seats in the wrong place in the cockpit, that they should be one behind each other. So that leads me nicely onto the inspiration for the build. As I've said previously, the inspiration for the build was mainly the Halo Infinite trailer and the D77TC Pelican, which is featured in Halo 1, but also Halo 2 Anniversary with the cutscenes that Blur remastered for that version of Halo 2. I'm going to use one of these cutscenes to show you some comparison shots of the mock versus the inspiration from the video. So here's a side on view. I'm relatively pleased with that. And then we move on from the side on view into the cockpit where you can clearly see two seats side by side with Johnson right behind them. And I've taken a couple of very bad pictures as you can see just to confirm that the seats are where they should be. Obviously, I know that's not Johnson in my pictures, but unfortunately, I don't have a Johnson minifig, so I've just had to use that guy instead. So moving on to the exterior of the Pelican again from the front, you can see I'm pretty pleased with this angle as well. I feel I've captured the general shape of the Pelican from the front. So again, pretty pleased here. One big mistake I will confess to is this Pelican should only have one thruster th per engine pod out of the back, whereas mine's got two per engine pod. Not sure how that happened, obviously got confused with which Pelican I was looking at, but by the time I'd done it, I wasn't going to rebuild it. The engine pods on mine with the twin thr thrusters are from the later Halo 3 variant of the Pelican. You can also see on this cutscene just how cavernous the troop bay is, which was another thing many people commented on. You can't even see both sides of it in the same frame on these shots, so when you compare it to the inside of my troop bay, uh, I think it's pretty accurate. They also say that you can line up two mongoose end to end in the center of the troop bay, as well as seating five troops on either side. And you can also see in these shots from the Halo Infinite trailer, just how big the cockpit, airlock and troop bay is as Brohammer, as he's more affectionately been named, uh, transfers from the front of the Pelican right through to the back of the Pelican. As you can see, the troop bay looks much bigger than we're used to seeing with the in-game pelicans. And the same goes for as he transfers back through that airlock area into the cockpit. You can really see how big the cockpit is in these scenes here. You can also see the resemblance between this cockpit and the cockpit that Blur Studios remastered in the Halo 2 that I showed you earlier. So as I mentioned earlier, the inspiration for this mock was this video, the Halo Infinite video, and then I used the Blur Studios cutscenes just to get a few extra details that I couldn't see from this video, for example, the outside. That just about covers everything I wanted to discuss in the video, but I wanted to close the video out with some photos I took now that the mock's finished. So as I said earlier, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.